but very much aligned with what you're saying is uh, when I did the research for the boy crisis, what I found was nine different um, ways that uh, what I call dad style parenting versus mom style parenting. And those, and what I saw was that the children who did the best were the ones that had an active involvement of dad and mom style parenting. They have what I call checks and balance parenting. And so you were talking about boundary uh, enforcement or boundary setting. Mm. <laughs> Let me sort of give an example of that. The moms and dads actually set boundaries very similarly. They both are likely to say, um, you know, sweetie, you can't have your ice cream until you finish your peas. Um, and the child, children will tend to uh, test those boundaries very similarly. They'll both tend to say, you know, they'll both try to figure out how they can have the fewest possible bees before they have their ice cream, um, metaphorically speaking, mostly. And then the, but the difference between mom and dad style parenting is moms will be far more likely, let's say the child was bullied at school and the child says, comes home crying and the mother is going to say, much more likely to say, um, oh, sweetie, I know you've had a tough day today. So I'll tell you what, instead of having all the peas before you finish your ice cream, like I just said you needed to do, I can see that you're really suffering today. So I'll tell you what, have half of these peas before you finish your ice cream. Um, and you know, the child will learn, aha, with mom, it's all I have to do is touch her at a soft space and I can manipulate a better deal. Um, with dad, the child is <coughs> likely to say some version of the same thing. And dad will say more likely, more likely to say, excuse me, I understand that you've had a tough day today, but you, ha you have to, but we do have an agreement here. And the agreement, agreement is that you have to finish your peas before you have your ice cream. Oh, dad, you're so mean. You don't, you know, I don't have to do that with mom. Well, that's mom's rules. Um, but under, it, you know, when I'm taking care of you, uh, the rules are you have to finish your peas just like we already agreed to. Um, and if you continue whining and complaining, there'll be no peas tomorrow. There'll be no ice cream tomorrow night or tonight. Uh oh. Okay, so the child with dad is much more likely to see that he has to finish. The boundaries are going to be enforced, not just set. And that therefore he's got to finish the peas before he gets the ice cream. And therefore, we see when children are raised predominantly by dads, only 15% of them are likely to evolve into having ADHD. When children are uh, raised predominantly by moms, 30%, twice as many children have ADHD. And if you just look at that one example, you can get some sense as to why. With dad, the child is forced to focus on doing what she or he needs to do, finish the peas before she or he gets what they want to have, which is the ice cream. With mom, the child learns, I don't have to focus on that. I can focus on manipulating a better deal. And my mind can go from one thing to the other. It doesn't have to stay focused on finishing the peas. Therefore, the child with dad is less likely to have not only ADHD, but is more likely to develop the single biggest predictor of success or failure that it, that in, in children, among children, which is postponed gratification. That is, the child with the dad is learning that it has to postpone the gratification of the ice cream in, um, by eating the peas, completing the finishing of the peas. So that gives you a sense of the importance of postponed gratification, the importance of uh, the distinction between boundary setting versus enforcement, the connection of that to ADHD and to postponed gratification. But postponed gratification, I said, is the single biggest predictor of success or failure. Well, when a child who has mastery over postponed gratification goes to school and they try to finish their homework and somebody is inviting them to, to get involved in a video game instead or a text instead, the person with postponed gratification can finish it. The person with, without postponed gratification gets sidetracked into doing the video game or the text or whatever. And so that person in the long run doesn't end up feeling good about themselves. They don't get positive reinforcement from teachers. They don't get positive reinforcement from um, peers. Um, when it comes to boy-girl time, girls go out with winners, not losers. 
So the you know the the guy who can't doesn't have postponed gratification is seen as a loser. Uh, he doesn't he's not able to to compete in sports effectively because he doesn't do good rehearsal for the sports or good rehearsal for the the play or rehearsal for the music or rehearsal for the um, for 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 anything else. And so he ends up being a loser. So he gets addicted to pornography or video games, and then he feels badly about himself and ashamed of himself. He doesn't get as much reinforcement from his parents. And that's what sets up often withdrawal, alienation, depression, and in worst case scenarios, the school shootings. School shootings in the, in the United States in the 21st century, um, every school shooting of 10 or more people being killed was, was conducted not only by a, a male, but by a dad deprived male. And so, when I, so this is only one of nine examples um, when I did the research for the boy crisis, one of nine examples of the difference between dad style parenting and mom style parenting. So it's so important for every man who's listening to this to understand what those nine differences are and to explain in a loving way what those differences are to their, to their wives or their women friends or the mothers so that mothers can, can see you not as being stubborn, but as having a reason for doing what you naturally tend to do, like roughhousing, um, like um, saying that your child needs to uh, not just um, get mom to get a better a, a teacher and school that she likes, but that dad's way of looking at that will be you have to get along with people even that you don't like. So you might as well learn that in third grade rather than um, you know get us to to change your teacher. There's hundreds, there's dozens of ways like that that moms and dads will look at things differently. And who has the best idea? Usually it's the combination of both mother and father's um, way of parenting.